It's the time of year when they can have great memories and sometimes not so great memories. And think about what we don't have or what somebody else has, has that we want. <laughs> you know? Or I wish I had more money so I could give everybody everything. But I don't, so I won't. And if I did, I probably wouldn't either. <laughs> huh? Come on, be honest now. So we'll just take a minute here. Gonna have a fiery message this morning. Fire, Holy Ghost fire. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Who said that? Come on. Anybody read Tale of Two Cities? Charles Dickens? It was coming to me this week, I'm like, wow, that sounds like right now. There's great opportunities there unless you get sunk down in the worst of times. Although sometimes bad things happen during December. I'm going to read you what he started, what he said here, and you just um, see if it doesn't kind of fit what's going on right now. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity which basically means doubt or skepticism. It was a season of light, it was a season of darkness, it was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. That sort of fits what a lot of people are going through right now, even our country, right? And sometimes we just have to decide where we're gonna land on this kind of thing, you know? Where are we gonna stay when things don't look that good? Jesus didn't show up at the most opportune time. He shows up these days in the, when it's not the... Paul told Timothy, be instant, in season and out of season. In other words, when it seems like it fits perfect and when it doesn't. This morning when I opened up, I read in Matthew chapter 13 where it says, verse 31, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. That was the smallest of all seeds, yet when it, grow, it, when it grows, it's the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Last week I talked about how it says in Ecclesiastes, around 4.10, it says, Don't despise the day of small beginnings. <coughs> Jesus Christ came, was born in a barn, born into a peasant family. We know they didn't have that much money. He was a carpenter. They didn't make carpenter's wages in those days. You were either the main halves the high mucky mucks, or you were a peasant. And when they, when they took Jesus to the temple to dedicate him just exactly the way they were supposed to, they brought the offering of a poor person, two doves. you find that in the book of Leviticus. Born in a manger, which is a cattle trough. Some pretty scared people who went back to their family village because of a head tax that the government put on them. They've been trying that around here. They tried it in Seattle here a while ago. Yeah. Nobody seems to like that. It hasn't worked good for <laughs> centuries, right? So I guess the title of my message was is that Jesus is the mustard seed that God sowed in the earth. Amen. God came down in the form 
of a little baby. It's just kind of mind-boggling, and if you've ever seen a mustard seed, as it says in the scripture, it's one of the smallest seeds there is. Some people carry it around in, in a little container, you know, and put it on their necklace or whatever, just to remind themselves, because it tells us in John 17 that faith is like a mustard seed. Faith deposited in you. But you've got to nurture, put some water on it, put some fertilizer on it. These are great days for the kingdom, which grew out of the king being born. These are great days for the expansion of the kingdom. Remember, Jesus said it was like yeast in flour. It just begins to permeate every bit. That gospel through Christ has permeated uh, every nation around the world. Now, not every soul, but every nation has been touched. If it hasn't, you might ask why. I'll tell you why, because you haven't gone there yet. You know, some people talk about, you know, these innocent people dying over here and these starving people over there and why does God allow that to happen? The bigger question is, why aren't you doing something about it? Well, I don't have enough money to feed everybody. How about one person? You know? Well, I can't do this and I can't do that. Well, ask God what you can do. Because if you got a seed of faith, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. And you'll help somebody when the opportunity shows up, like helping them change a flat tire <laughs> in a rainy night. I about made my day. And it wasn't that much fun, was it, Alex? <laughs> Charles Dickens also said, I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all year long. Come on. Every day is Christmas. Some people argue that it's not the 25th of December. I don't care. You've got to celebrate his birthday sometime. There was a guy flying a cardboard sign over in front of Fred Meyer last week. And he comes, I parked and he comes by me like he's headed into the store. And out of the blue, I thought he was going to ask me for money or something. Out of the blue, he just goes, you know, the stars lined up on December 21, and Jesus was born in 800 years ago. And then he walked into the store. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't even think the guy was tweaking. I don't know. He just was a bit odd. The infinite God. The almighty, powerful God became small and helpless. That seed came. The king came. Then the kingdom began to grow. At first, people just thought it was some little cult. They had a lot of cults in those days. Just some little weird group. Billions, billions of souls right now around the world are calling on the name of Jesus. Come on. That's how big that tree has grown into. It's like a bush. It's like an insignificant plant. You know, if you've ever been around church planting, most of them start with nothing. This church started over 20 years ago. No people, no building, no money. What? Are you crazy? <laughs> started as a seed. The bush got big enough for some folks to find some rest, to find a nest. And we just praise God for that. Never be dejected. Always look up. Always keep the spirit life above the chaos. 
Rest in God's arm and be prayer, prepared for the rest of the road. Never be dejected. Always look up. Always look to the cross. Never be dejected. Always look up. First of all, lift your head up. Quit contemplating your belly button. Lift your head up. And then the question is, what are you looking at? Jesus! I'm telling you, the government, we got a good government in this country. We do, even though there's, it's a big mess. I'll tell you what, it's like a chess game. I just realized. <laughs> it's like a chess game. But at least there's a chess game to play in this country. Other countries, forget it. Never be de dejected. Always look up. Lift up your head. Look up to the cross. Look up to Christ. Look up to heaven. Some people get all humbug about Christmas. Listen, thank God for all the lights. I think there's a lot more lights this year. For, I think people just got bored and, and decided, well, I can't go out and do much, so I'm just going to put up a bunch of lights. Light Let them cheer you up. That's right, because they're like the light of the world, Jesus Christ. Some people get all bent out of shape about the Christmas tree. I'll tell you what the Christmas tree is. It's the cross right there. We were one of those Jeremiah chapter 10 people of like, no, the Bible says don't put those in there. Je Jeremiah chapter 10 is talking about setting up an idol. Now, if you have a Christmas tree and you sing, oh, Christmas tree, and you light a candle and burn some incense and bow and ask it for prayer, that's what Jeremiah 10 is talking about. John chapter 3, 14 and 15, you know what 316 says? Do you know what 3, 14 and 15 say? Yeah. It says, as Moses lifted up that snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. It's explained later on in the book of John, chapter 12, verses 31 to 33. If you're taking notes, it says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And this he signified uh, uh, that it was his death on the cross. Also, you might check out Exodus chapter 15, verse 22, when Moses cast a tree into bitter water and it became sweet and livable and palatable. That was uh, looking forward to the cross because if you, if you apply the cross to your bitter experiences from the past, it'll turn sweet. You'd be able to release things, pray about things. Place your disappointments and your sins at the foot of the cross. Amen. Dickens also said something about um, reflecting upon your present blessings of which every man has many, not on your past misfortunes of which all men have some. Well, you don't know my story. I'm, I got a worse story than you. Let's not just spend all of our time on the ugly past, the broken past, the painful past. Let's count the blessings of what we have now. So this guy already in prison. Never be dejected. Always look up. Always keep the spirit life above the chaos. Rest in God's arm and be prepared for the rest of the road. Disappointment. Place your disappointments and your sins at the foot of the cross. If you have periods of depression, whatever it is, put it at the foot of the cross. Amen. He said always keep the spirit life above the chaos. One way we do that, Ephesians uh, 2 verse 6 says we're seated together in Christ in heavenly places. We should be viewing our life, the life of those around us, the world situation from the throne room. That's where we're seated. It's a whole different, broader perspective. It has Almighty God right there next to you, in fact, in you. 
Amen? Come on. Amen. Above the chaos. Reflect upon your present blessings, of which we have many. That's, I quoted that a minute ago. Do you know where that came from? That's Dickens, too, and that's from A Christmas Carol. It's about Scrooge. Well, things change in that man's life. Reflect on the blessings. He said, rest in God's arms. In Hebrews 4, there is a rest, a Sabbath rest. The thing about the Sabbath is it's not just the seventh day, it's Christ. He is the fulfillment of the Sabbath, and so you can be at rest in Christ any moment of the day. Sometimes it takes a moment to get there. But you read about it in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 11, it says, Strive to enter in to his rest. Now, wait a minute. It's rest. Why do I have to strive? Well, because there's distractions sometimes. There are distractions. Some of them are negative distractions. Some of them, they just shine and glitter. And we get mesmerized by something good or something shiny or something brand new they're trying to sell us. Sometimes it's a new car, sometimes it's a bill of goods. Distracted, confused. We gotta keep the main thing, the main thing. That's Jesus. That's how God is the one that changes lives. I couldn't even change my own life. I tried a few times. Said, ah, it's useless. I just got worse. The main thing is his birth, his life, his death on the cross, and his resurrection. The only one, the only one that's pulled it off. Amen. Amen. He's the only one that's pulled it off. He prepared for the rest of the road. Because there's a road out in front of you and it might have some chunk holes and it might be bumpy, it might be paved and it might be a, you know, tremendous highway and it might be a side road that God leads you on. And sometimes we just got to man up, woman up, person up. Has God planted a seed in you? Then pay attention to it. It has to do with the ministry of personal relationship with Christ. It has to do with the expansion of the kingdom, which has to do with reaching out into other areas, other people's lives. Amen. Doing what you can, sharing what you can. Amen. <coughs> has God planted a seed in you? He's not going to bubble wrap you for the future. Right, Don? We try so hard to comfort ourselves and comfort our kids and comfort everybody around us so they won't ever get in any trouble. That's not what life is about. It doesn't work. Right? God's not going to do that with you. You're going to get some bumps and bruises when you're out there winning people to Christ. Never been involved in a real demonic deliverance. It's not fun and games. Right, Pauline? It gets kind of ugly. It gets kind of loud. Sometimes it's just so soft and gentle, you don't even hardly realize it, and the person just gets set free. But sometimes it's pretty wild. You're going to jump into it and help somebody get set free. Oh, my faith is so small. Well, it started as a mustard seed when you open your heart to Christ. It's going to grow into something that other people can get blessed out of. That bush, that kingdom bush is growing in your heart and in your life. Amen? Come on. Amen. You don't need a whole lot. The song goes, just use what you got. Use it. Oh, don't be like the guy that buried it. I know, times are tough. I'm just going to bury it and save it. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do and somebody doesn't like it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The pastor over in the Philippines that took over, while I left, there was another guy, and then, he, and then the guy that's there now that's a pastor, when he got saved, a guy knocked his eyeball out. 
He's only, for the last 25 years, he's been seeing out of one eye because he shared his faith with somebody and the guy poked his, put his eye out, slugged him so hard. So that stuff happens, right? Blessings happen. And bumps and bruises happen. A lot of us had them when we didn't need to have them. <laughs> Let's follow Jesus and see what happens. Right? Count the blessings. Would you stand with me? Let's pray. Again, as God planted a seed of faith in you. Listen, let God make this Christmas time a time of watering your faith, fertilizing your faith, using your faith. Are we going to take that seed and, and nurture it this time yes. because I believe it's the best of times it's a day of opportunity Amen. even though it's also the worst of times we're going to look for God's wisdom or participate in somebody else's foolishness we're going to let our faith arise or we're going to be doubtful and skeptical huh? are we going to be filled with hope thank you Lord Jesus Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace today, God. Thank you that, God, you humbled yourself and showed up. Thank you, Lord, that you came to be with us, Lord God, to walk with us, to care for us, and spend your life for us, Lord. We're just going to be forever grateful, God, for what you did, for what you're doing today, and what you're going to be doing this week. Help us to stay above the chaos, Lord, and rest in your arms. Prepare us, God, for the road ahead. In Jesus' name, amen.